good girl. Polka is part cow. This thing was bone dry a couple of weeks ago. So tomorrow I've got clients in the morning and the afternoon and then I'll be flying out to Arizona for the Barbell Medicine Seminar this weekend, which means that I have to train early tomorrow morning, Friday morning. So I train first thing Thursday morning to give myself as close to 24 hours in between training sessions as possible, rather than wandering to the gym on Thursday evening at 6 p.m., finishing up at 8 p.m., and then having to get up at 5 a.m. on Friday to train. So the lesson of the day is plan ahead. The biggest question is, what album am I gonna listen to on my way to the gym? Aha! If you know this artist, within the first five seconds of this song being played, comment down below. Hey everyone, this video is gonna be about I'm not really sure. This is just gonna be a random hodgepodge eclipse from the recent Barbell Medicine Seminar in Arizona. So you'll get to see some of the trip over there, the house that we stayed in, you'll get to see some of the clips from the actual lectures themselves, some of the coaching portion on the platform, Jordan crashing his drone in a field of cacti, and some of the training footage from me, Jordan, Austin, and Leah on Monday after the seminar. So myself and Jordan Feigenbaum of Barbell Medicine put together the best how to bench press tutorial video. It's over on the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. It's an excellent video if I do say so myself. So go check that out. I'll probably be spamming my videos for the next couple of weeks. Encouraging you guys to go check out that video. How to bench press, Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. Welcome aboard the spacious cabin. Attractively decorated, air conditioned, but draft free. No vibration, hardly any sound. A new concept in air transportation. Passenger at all, we check in. The rental car shuttles are located outside door number two on the outer curve to your right. Big green bus, we show up with the car. Welcome to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Say hi, Leo. Hi. Thomas. Good morning. Dr. Baraki. Good morning.
What happened? I guess it hit that tree and then all like the propellers just blew off. Oh. Which is good because the drone's fine. Just, yeah. When you fly in a like a restricted zone, I guess your crash wood and stuff's turned off. So but yeah, there's like this really tall tree over there and I was doing this sideways this pan kind of thing. Yeah. And then it just you see this tree and it's like <laughs> it's like an excite bike crash. Carry on. Yep. More stress. More fatigue. That's the goal. Goal of training is to apply the, for, uh, the correct type and the correct amount of stress that ultimately produces fatigue so that you're better at dealing with that stress. So let's just say it's a nice place to start. These are characteristics that we would like to develop during our program. If you're post novice, okay, after novice progression, we know that. Improvement and increase in muscle cross-sectional area is one of the most important contributors to improve strength gain. So if you're training in a way that does not increase muscle cross-sectional area, you're severely tempering your ability to get strong, almost eliminating it. So if you do not have an increase in training volume after your novice progression, you are severely tempering your ability to get strong. Is that the outcomes from 70 to 90 percent, if this is your your intensity range or percent of one rep max. If the volume is the same and the exercises are the same, the strength outcomes on average are gonna be the same. Meaning that you don't have to go heavier to get a better response. If you have somebody doing this thing at 90% and getting the same response as somebody at 70%, which one is more stressful? 90%. But if they're getting the same outcome, that's just extra stress that they're having to deal with. And it's not productive. All it's doing is taking away training resources, right? And making them use their recovery resources on stuff that's not making them stronger. When really, they could have been doing more here or more at 75% or 80%, for instance. Okay, your recovery rate, your recoverability is doing what? Going down too, you're worse at recovering now. Worse recovering at a time when you've just shown that you need more stress. You've proven that you need more stress because you're unable to continue this workout. And so instead of increasing the stress, right, which is going to require every bit of recovery uh, 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 resource that you have, you're saying, you know what? Let's just pull some stress off. Let your recovery go to hell. That's fine. I want you to put more weight on the bar today because that's important. This is how that traditional model of pain works. It is strongly focused on the current state of your tissues. It focuses on those as an explanation for where pain comes from. There are lots of problems with this model. This is not a good explanation for how pain works, as you will learn. And people's pain threshold and pain tolerance obviously vary between people. You all already know that but they also vary within the person. One person themselves, their pain threshold and pain tolerance can vary over time, depending on the context. What is going on at the time? What is catastrophizing? When you immediately jump to the worst possible explanation for whatever's going on. Minimize dependency. I don't want them to be dependent on me forever. I don't want them every time something hurts, or if that same thing hurts, to say, oh, back just went out again. Got to go back to my Cairo. Too much trouble with elbows or shoulders as a result of that position. The vastus medialis. It's a little bit lower than that. Again, more upright, more upright. Here's the thing with the strong. Good. 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 Don't drop your butt from there. No, shut your shins. We're good. Now don't drop your butt from there. Chest down, chest pull. Good. Nice job. Knees low back. Very nice and done. Very nice. Bar on the leg. Bar come forward a little bit. Good. Now bend your knees. Knees out. Chest up. Yeah, I will tell you guys a little secret. Yeah.
Is that changing Monday? No SIBO. This is a phenomenon by which negative expectations result in worse outcomes than you would have previously had. When you look at incidence of back pain, it goes up 30s to 40s and goes down later in life. So that doesn't make sense. Interesting. We will come back to this. But it shouldn't be that surprising after all the stuff I told you before. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in like this, oh, how am I gonna move my hips? All right. Stiff up there. So just get a little lower than you want to, and uh, you'll be able to get the back angle you want. Good. Good. Keep close to your face. Um, for me, the press yeah, definitely uh, benefits from having that because then I, I feel set, right? And then you're hopefully able to break against it. That's the idea. What do you want on there? Better. Better. Now. There we go. Very nice to go. Uh, my favorite part of the seminar was uh, how concise and simply the information was laid out. There's a lot of complex topics that I felt like were really laid out in a very coherent and easily understandable manner. Um, also, I really enjoyed the lifting instruction, particularly Alan Thrall, who gave very good, concise cues that really helped me out on some things that I've been training alone at home that, uh, you know, a lot of the cueing I received uh, at the seminar helped me you know, clear up a lot of things that I was wondering about. Uh, understanding how, like, resistance training and how using a barbell and getting strong helps, like, health outcomes, to me, is, is really fascinating, actually. If you're part of the seminar, it was probably a pain, pain uh, lecture. Uh, growing my knowledge bank as a strength and conditioning coach, when you think you know things, you come to this, you're going to find out that maybe you don't, and that you're going to learn a lot more and help as many people as possible, so thanks guys. Well, I learned a ton. Uh, definitely the pain stuff wasn't something I was expecting, like just how much I didn't know about that. Was, uh, and uh, my favorite part was getting to work out with people, which I don't normally get to do back home, so it was great to be around like-minded people and get a chance to just watch a bunch of people doing the same lifts I'm trying to learn. Hey, my favorite part of the seminar was interacting with all the individual coaches. They all have their own particular style, their own particular way of teaching, and getting to rotate through the coaches gives you a really good I guess, perspective and look at ways to improve each of the lifts. Uh, my favorite part was definitely Austin's pain lecture, the two hour long one, just learning about the different factors that can affect pain and the whole biopsychosocial model and everything. What was your favorite part of the <laughs> seminar? It was being able to hang out with Alan Thrall again. <laughs> My favorite part of the seminar was meeting Tom Campitelli. Yeah, she's having fun. Right now, but I think we're the best patient. I grow. I grow. That would be great. That would be awesome. We need to be left. I'm ready for my touch runner. Well, there he goes. Help, help, Dad. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> it's not gonna work. This proves This requires no athleticism.
Let's go. Good. Come on. Barbell Medicine Crew will be back on tour for more seminars in Santa Cruz, California, Seattle, Washington, Brooklyn, New York, and we'll be in Philly in November. I'll link information to the seminars down in the description area of this video. That's it. Thanks for watching, and always remember, Dread on Time!